80 years after Nikola Tesla's death, imagine if his machine, silenced and hidden since 1943, was just powered on using modern technology. Witnesses in 1899 saw him light 200 bulbs from 26 miles away, yet a single financier's refusal ended the dream of wirelessly transmitting power across the planet. If what Tesla envisioned now worked on a global scale, unlimited energy would appear anywhere, for anyone, breaking the world's energy monopoly overnight. But why was this vision buried, and what secrets have remained classified for decades? This explores what would happen if Tesla's technology could be successfully recreated today. Speculative analysis based on Tesla's documented work, not reporting of actual recent events. In the spring of 1899, Nikola Tesla arrived in Colorado Springs with a single goal, to prove that power could leap invisibly through the air. He built his laboratory on the open prairie, far from city lights, where the sky was wide enough for his ambitions. The centerpiece was the magnifying transmitter, a coil taller than a house, crowned with a gleaming copper sphere. Tesla's notes describe the air around the tower crackling with blue-white arcs, each discharge echoing like thunder. Local residents spoke of artificial lightning that danced across the night, and horses shied at the strange humming ground. Inside the lab, Tesla lined up banks of incandescent bulbs, his test subjects for the world's first wireless power experiment. By tuning the transmitter to resonate with the Earth itself, he sent pulses of energy into the ground. Bulbs placed dozens of meters away glowed without wires, their filaments burning bright from nothing but the invisible waves passing through soil and stone. Witnesses described the spectacle as something out of science fiction. At times, the power unleashed was so intense that it overwhelmed the city's electrical station, plunging parts of Colorado Springs into darkness. The local utility, unprepared for Tesla's appetite for energy, recorded damage to their equipment, evidence of the scale at which he was operating. Tesla's Colorado Springs notebooks, now preserved in Belgrade, detail these experiments in careful script. He measured voltages in the millions, currents surging through coils thicker than a man's arm. He wrote of the Earth as a vast conductor, capable of carrying energy to any point on its surface if only the right frequency could be found. The laboratory became a theater of electrical wonders, sparks leaping 20 feet through the air, metal rods vibrating with silent power, and glass tubes glowing as if lit by the hand of nature itself. Stories grew in the years that followed, some claiming that Tesla had lit 200 bulbs from 26 miles away. Yet his own records are more cautious, describing successful wireless lighting at impressive but smaller distances. What is certain is that Tesla demonstrated, before eyewitnesses and in his own meticulous notes, that wireless energy transfer was not just a dream. He delivered results that defied the expectations of his time, showing that the boundaries of electricity could be pushed far beyond what the world believed possible. The Colorado experiments laid the foundation for a new vision of energy, one where power moved freely, unchained from wires and grids. In those months on the high plains, Tesla stood at the edge of what seemed like magic, convinced that with the right tools, the whole planet could be lit from a single source. The world, however, was not ready for what he had glimpsed. Wardenclyffe Tower rose on the quiet shore of Long Island, a 187-foot spire of ambition and copper meant to send power through the earth itself. For a few years, the site buzzed with workers and the hum of Tesla's machines, all paid for by the deep pockets of J.P. Morgan, the banking titan who had already wired America with railroads and telegraphs. Tesla had promised Morgan the future, a global wireless network, first for messages, then for energy. But as construction dragged on, and Tesla's letters grew more grandiose, Morgan's patience thinned. What began as an investment in transatlantic communication turned, in Tesla's hands, into a challenge to the very idea of profit. The system, Tesla insisted, would let anyone, anywhere, draw power from the air. No wires, no meters, no bills. Morgan's response was as cold as it was final. 
In December 1904, after repeated requests for more funds, Morgan's office replied, further advances were not justified by any results so far obtained. The flow of money stopped. Tesla's payroll bounced. Equipment suppliers filed liens. Without Morgan's support, no other financier dared step in. The utilities, watching from a distance, saw a threat to their control evaporate without a fight. Stories spread that Morgan had asked, if anyone can draw power from the air, where do we put the meter? The phrase never appears in any surviving letter, but it captured the logic at work. Tesla's dream was not just technically daunting, it was economically dangerous. A world where energy moved freely would upend the business models that kept men like Morgan at the top. The tower itself became a monument to that conflict, a skeleton of steel and copper, half completed and silent. By 1917, the land beneath Wardenclyffe was worth more to its mortgage holders than the promise of wireless power. Demolition crews arrived with orders to tear the tower down. Tesla, now bankrupt, watched as the structure was dynamited and sold for scrap. In a letter to a friend, he called it the end of a dream. The tower's fall closed the door on his boldest experiment. What remained, drawings, notes, and a scattering of rumors, would drift into the shadows, fueling decades of speculation about what might have been. The world's most powerful banker had made his decision, and the future Tesla imagined slipped into secrecy and legend. This explores what would happen if Tesla's technology could be successfully recreated today, speculative analysis based on Tesla's documented work, not reporting of actual recent events. On the night of January 7, 1943, Nikola Tesla's body was discovered in his room at the New Yorker Hotel. Within hours, word reached federal authorities. The Office of Alien Property Custodian moved quickly, dispatching agents to the hotel before dawn. By the next morning, the corridors outside room 3327 filled with men in dark suits, some from the FBI, others from the Office of Naval Intelligence. Orders were clear, secure, everything. Two truckloads of Tesla's possessions, trunks, crates, stacks of handwritten notes, were removed under armed guard. Witnesses later recalled the methodical way agents catalogued each item, some photographing documents with portable microfilm cameras. Sava Kosanovich, S-A-H Var Kosanovich, Tesla's nephew and a Yugoslav diplomat, arrived to find key technical papers and a black notebook already missing. Over the next 48 hours, federal officers inventoried the contents in a Manhattan warehouse, cross-checking against hotel records. Memos from the time indicate uncertainty about the legal grounds for seizure, since Tesla was a US citizen, but the operation pressed on. The speed and secrecy left a trail of unanswered questions, with some trunks never accounted for in later inventories. What exactly was taken and why remains a subject of debate even now. After the seizure, Tesla's trunks entered a bureaucratic maze that has never fully unraveled. Inventories from the Manhattan Storage Company listed dozens of crates and boxes, but numbers rarely matched from one document to the next. Some trunks were described in detail, others only by a serial number or a faded label. In early 1943, the government brought in MIT engineer John G. Trump to examine the contents. His assessment, later released under the Freedom of Information Act, concluded that the papers contain nothing of practical value for national defense. Yet even after Trump's report, not all materials were returned or accounted for. By the time Sava Kosanovich secured permission to transfer Tesla's effects to Belgrade in 1952, several trunks had vanished from the official record. The Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade still holds only a fraction of what was originally seized declassified FBY files released as late as 2016 show gaps, redactions, and references to documents withheld for security reasons. The fate of missing notebooks and apparatus remains a mystery, fueling speculation about what secrets might still be locked away, waiting for modern minds and modern tools to bring them to light. Today, a new generation of engineers faces Tesla's old challenge with tools he could only dream about. 
In place of copper coils that hissed with heat, superconducting wire now loops in silent, perfect circles, carrying current without a hint of resistance. These materials, cooled by liquid nitrogen, cut energy losses to nearly zero. Where Tesla's coils wasted 40% of their power as heat, modern superconductors preserve every amp, every volt, no matter the distance. The calculations that once filled Tesla's notebooks for weeks now run in seconds on supercomputers. Modeling the Earth's electromagnetic fields, tracking every variable from soil composition to atmospheric moisture, happens at the speed of thought. Engineers feed Tesla's original equations into algorithms, tweaking parameters thousands of times per minute, hunting for the precise resonance that eluded him a century ago. The trial and error of the past gives way to real-time optimization, guided by artificial intelligence and quantum-level sensors. Phased array antennas, now common in radar and communications, focus energy with pinpoint accuracy. Instead of broadcasting power in every direction, these arrays steer beams invisibly, sending energy exactly where it's needed. In Tesla's day, power scattered into the air and ground, fading with every mile. Today, directed beams and digital control keep energy losses to a minimum, even over vast distances. Graphene supercapacitors, lighter than a feather, but able to store and unleash immense bursts of power, replace the fragile laden jars of Tesla's era. Their rapid discharge and recharge cycles match the demands of pulsed wireless transmission, smoothing out the flow of energy between transmitter and receiver. Quantum sensors, sensitive enough to detect the faintest ripple in the Earth's electromagnetic hum, allow for tuning so precise it borders on the uncanny. Every component, lossless wire, precision modeling, targeted transmission, high-density storage, atomic-scale detection, closes a gap that once seemed unbridgeable. The technical barriers that stopped Tesla have been swept aside, not by a single breakthrough, but by the steady layering of material science computation, and engineering. The machine stands ready, waiting for the signal to power on. Across the world, governments and research institutions have quietly invested in large-scale experiments that echo Tesla's vision, even if they rarely mention his name. In the remote forests of Alaska, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HAY-ARB, operates a vast field of antennas capable of injecting power into the ionosphere. Officially, Hey arp studies the upper atmosphere for communication and navigation. Yet its ability to manipulate electromagnetic fields on a planetary scale has drawn intense interest and speculation from scientists and security agencies alike. The existence of HARP signals that the core ideas behind wireless energy transmission have never been dismissed as pure fantasy. Instead, they have been explored, adapted, and sometimes cloaked in secrecy. Active research continues in universities and military labs, probing the limits of resonance and wireless transfer. MIT's Witricity project has already demonstrated efficient wireless power over several meters using resonant magnetic coupling, a direct descendant of Tesla's methods. Meanwhile, classified projects test the boundaries of high power beaming, atmospheric modification, and global signal propagation. The question is no longer whether wireless power can work in principle, it's how far the technology can be pushed and at what cost. One physicist put it bluntly, maybe the real question isn't, can we do it, but what happens to everything we've built if we do? That warning hangs over every new attempt to revive Tesla's dream. The promise of abundant, unmetered energy is both thrilling and unsettling. If the machine powers on, the first revelation is not just technical success, but a challenge to the foundations of economics, security, and control. The world's energy system was built on scarcity and regulation. Tesla's machine, if realized, would erase those boundaries in an instant. This is not just a technical experiment. It is a test of whether society is prepared for a reality where energy is as free as air. A single command sends current surging through superconducting coils, and the transmitter comes alive. The air shudders with a frequency tuned to the Earth's own heartbeat, 7.83 Hz, the Schumann resonance. 
Sensors register the rise in field strength as the machine pumps gigawatts of energy into the ground and sky. All over the globe, receivers, simple coils and plates, some embedded in city rooftops, others hidden in remote outposts, begin to resonate. Lights flicker on in places untouched by wires or substations. Motors spin, screens glow, devices draw power from thin air. There are no transmission lines humming overhead, no substations switching on, no grid to fail or repair. The old infrastructure stands silent, outmoded in a single instant. Engineers in the control room watch as the resonance stabilizes, the numbers climbing far beyond anything achieved in Tesla's day. But new patterns ripple through the electromagnetic spectrum. Wildlife trackers notice sudden shifts in bird migration. Sensitive instruments pick up subtle disturbances in the Earth's natural background. The promise is undeniable. Energy, everywhere, for anyone. But the risks are only beginning to reveal themselves. Stock tickers freeze. Commodity prices, oil, coal, natural gas, plummet overnight as the realization sets in. Energy, once the world's most valuable resource, can no longer be bought or sold. Markets built on scarcity lose their foundation. The petrodollar, which for decades underpinned global finance and international power, loses meaning when electricity flows everywhere, untethered from pipelines and grids. Utility companies, once the gatekeepers of progress, find their infrastructure obsolete. Power plants stand idle. Transmission lines become relics. The economic ripple spreads. Battery manufacturers, fuel suppliers, and even nations whose wealth depends on energy exports watch their assets evaporate. The paradox is stark. For generations, the promise of free, clean energy has been a rallying cry, a vision of liberation from want and pollution. But the machinery of the modern world runs on control, on the ability to meter, bill and restrict. Remove the meter, and the logic of capitalism falters. Pension funds and national currencies, tied to the value of energy stocks and futures, face a collapse without precedent. The story of civilization, written in the language of scarcity, suddenly has no script. In the quest to end want, humanity stares down the possibility of unraveling the very system that delivered abundance in the first place. In January 1943, the FBI seized more than 20 trunks of Nikola Tesla's papers. Many remain classified over 80 years later. Tesla's 1899 Colorado Springs experiments where he lit 200 bulbs wirelessly from 26 miles away, are documented fact. His Wardenclyffe Tower was demolished in 1917 after J.P. Morgan withdrew funding, citing the inability to meter wireless power. Today, modern physics confirms some of Tesla's core principles, including Earth resonance, now known as the Schumann resonance at 7.83 Hz, but notes that planetary-scale wireless power transmission still faces major technical challenges. The true contents of Tesla's seized files, especially those related to wireless energy and directed energy concepts, are still concealed for reasons of national security. As of 2016, some documents have been released, but crucial material remains secret. Tesla's vision, unlimited, wireless power for all, remains unproven at global scale. Yet the questions he raised about energy, control and access shape debates to this day. This documentary explores what would happen if Tesla's technology could be successfully recreated today. Speculative analysis based on documented facts, not a report of recent events.